In this football manager experiment, we're going to find out if height matters at all in football manager. So in many ways, we're going to be replicating Zeeland's experiment video where he took a short team and a tall team and changed their jumping reach to see if height mattered at all in their ability to win the ball. But we're also going to take it one step further where we are going to look at the stats over the course of one season to see the influence of height and jumping reach on the ability to win headers in this match engine. So with that in mind, I have completely altered two teams in the English Premier Division, the first being Manchester City. And I have made every single one of their players have one jumping reach, but have absolutely insane 6'11 height. So every player on Manchester City is 6'11, the tallest that I could make that in the game. And just for the people who don't use 6'11 as metric units, that's 212 centimeters. So every player on Man City is 212 centimeters and has one jumping reach. So that's Erling Holland, De Bruyne, one jumping reach, but 6'11. Bernardo Silva, who has one jumping reach, but is 6'11. All the way down to Sergio Gomez here one jumping reach but is 6'11". So every player on Man City ha is insanely tall but has an insanely low jumping reach. And their foes are going to be Arsenal. So for example here we have Bukayo Saka. 20 jumping reach but is completely opposite. They are 4'11". So again looking at what that looks like that is 150 centimeters. So every player on Arsenal is incredibly short but has incredibly high jumping reach. So we've seen that with Saka and Rice, and even if we go all the way down here to Mohamed Elneny, he is 4'11 and has 20 jumping reach. So we are comparing players who are short but can jump versus players who are tall but can't jump. These are the complete opposites of the spectrum. We're going to find out if height matters at all. So I always hear people playing football manager, especially people like Lujo, who are looking for tall center forwards or tall center backs. In my head, I'm always thinking, but that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're tall because it doesn't affect the match engine. What matters is if they have good jumping reach or good strength. So again, today we're going to test that. We are going to pit the tall but can't jump team versus the short but can jump team. And we're going to see whether height really matters. And then we'll simulate for the whole season to see what happens. So we are going to play the Community Shield. I'm going to show you guys the game so you all can see what happens. And then we'll simulate to the season and we'll see what the results are. So see you all in our Community Shield. And just walking out from the tunnel. Look at how much taller Man City's player is than Arsenal. Arsenal looks so small comparatively. And the match begins. That looks insane in the match engine. That looks crazy. Look at how... Arsenal players are so short in comparison. All right, we're going to see whether height matters at all. We have David versus Goliath, essentially. So for the statistics here, I also have headers one down here. And we can see already in the short span we've had, Arsenal have already won more headers. We haven't really seen anything yet in the match engine where a player has had to win a cross or anything like that. But Odegaard puts it in. Is Rice going to win it? Rice absolutely wins the header in between two giant Man City players. His height didn't matter. He was able to get up there. What a header. All right, it's going to be a corner. This is exactly the type of highlight we wanted in this match. Martinelli swings it in. Rice wins the header. It's scored off of a Arsenal have scored off of a corner from a near post header going into the back post. I think this says a lot about whether height matters at all in game. I mean, just look at how it goes in. Rice, he's surrounded by like five Man City players. He's the one who gets up and heads it, and it's a goal. And if we look here at the stats, headers won significantly in the favor of Arsenal. City haven't been able to win any barely. Arsenal are winning most of the headers. So it is halftime, and there are a few things here that I want to take note of. Notably, the headers won statistic, which is significantly in favor of Arsenal. They've won 88% of their headers. City have only won 10% of their headers. 
despite being incredibly tall, the height has nothing to do in the match engine. It seems very clear in the first half, at least, that jumping reach is the important statistic. Height doesn't matter at all. Like there really haven't been that many chances in this game. Like it's it's been a bit of a boring match. And the stats get even worse for City. Only 8% of their headers having been won. And it's another corner for Arsenal, which you would think would be advantageous for the opposite. But Martinelli getting in front of two City defenders. And it goes over. I mean, it's pretty clear. With 91% of the headers being won for Arsenal, only 7% won by City. I mean, height clearly doesn't matter. Jumping reach is clearly what matters in the match engine. And this is being proven here, and we will go for the rest of the season to see. But I think this proves it. Can he, can he float it into the back post? Martinelli out jumping. That was insane. Martinelli easily out jumps. I think that was Kyle Walker. And 411 Martinelli with a towering header. Let's take a look at that again. So Odegaard plays it in. He finds Saka on the outside. And he just, he just floats it in. And look at how high Martinelli jumps. Another opportunity here for Arsenal to potentially get the ball into the box. Saka plays it through to Declan Rice. Declan Rice shoots, and it's going to be another corner opportunity for Arsenal. They've been dominant off corners. This is where you feel like Arsenal can really take advantage of their incredible jumping reach. Again, it's the jumping reach, not the height that matters. They've won every single header off of corners. I actually missed the initial goal, but here's the replay of what just happened. Gabriel playing it forward. Saka winning the header over two City players. He fits in Enketia, and Enketia finds the back of the net. It's 3-0 Arsenal. All right, we are in injury time. I think this match is just over. So before the game ends, we're going to highlight the big thing here. Headers won. Three per Despite being the tallest team on earth, Man City won one out of 29 of their potential headed attempts, 3%. On the flip side, 96% headers won for the shortest team on earth, 22 out of 23 potential headers won by Arsenal. It is very clear from this match, height doesn't matter, jumping reach matters. One last chance potentially for City to make this a 3-1 to one affair. Holland working his way out. Ball to De Bruyne. He shoots. <laughs> oh, that looked ridiculous with Raya. Raya has jumping reach, but it's not helping with that side to side potentially. It is three to one. An astounding win for Arsenal, which was effectively won off of being able to head the ball. Despite being the shortest, they only go up to his shoulder. They go up to his shoulder to receive the trophies. Oh, this is such a ridiculous animation. All right, we're going to head out of the match. So obviously, in real life, height and jumping reach should be correlated with each other. Like, Peter Crouch was a very tall individual, but he didn't really need to jump that high to have high jumping reach. In real life, height and jumping reach should be correlated. But in my opinion, that's not how things always work in the game with regens and sometimes even with the players in the match engine, is that height and jumping reach are probably correlated, but probably less so in-game. But I have spent a lot of my football managing career never paying attention to height or weight. I've always paid attention to jumping reach and strength. Those are always the things to me that have been the most important because it is the attributes in-game that actually affect what happens in the match engine the height and weight are simply for animation purposes, but it is the attributes that, that themselves affect what happens in the match engine. So with that being said, I feel like this game has shown, and we've seen what it looks like in match engine, what it looks like for a short team and a tall team, and we've seen that only jumping reach matters. So with that in mind, we are going to simulate one full season because this is a small sample size. This is one game. The purpose of this was just to see what it looks like in Match Engine. But we're going to simulate one full season and let's see what the outcomes are for City and Arsenal 
as far as being able to win headers are concerned. So I'll simulate one full season and I will see you at the end. All right, welcome back. We are at the end of the season where Man City have unsurprisingly run away with the English Premier League title. But interestingly, Arsenal have finished in ninth, which is very unexpected, which means we have some interesting results to potentially look at here. Maybe height did affect how they did. So let us look at the team detailed stats and see what's gone on. So possession wise, City unsurprisingly had a lot of possession. Interestingly, Arsenal didn't have a lot of possession. I wonder if they went away from their usual possession style tactic and went more route one. That would be interesting. But looking at it here, they won the most headers in the league and they had the highest headers one ratio in the league. As far as pure heading is concerned, this really proves that height doesn't matter at all when it comes to, to winning headers and having the ability to win headers. Because Arsenal won the most headers and had the highest ratio of headers won. It's pretty clear here that height doesn't matter for winning headers. It is all about jumping reach. That being said, though, I am curious to see why Arsenal might have done so poorly this season. So let's check out what that's all about. Well, for starters, they fired Mikel Arteta and brought in Diego Simeone. That is interesting. And they had Jack Wilshere. I mean, he was fired in... He was fired in November. That's really early on. How are they doing? They did well in the champion. I guess they weren't doing great in the league. I wonder why. I'm genuinely curious to know what happened there. Well, here's an interesting one for you. Arsenal were very poor as far as their XG. I wonder if they, they just had a bad season. Because they were terrible as far as their XG. And Man City were way over their XG. I mean, if Arsenal were even just normal, they would have finished much higher. Another interesting stat, and I would assume this has something to do with jumping reach, Arsenal had the most chances created. I mean, I assume a lot of that would be from crosses and such. Man City were third, unsurprisingly, given how good they are. But look at how good Arsenal was as far as creating chances. I can't figure out on here why they did so poorly other than just being well below their expected goals. Arsenal were also incredible for shots and shots on target, as were City, unsurprisingly. They had the most chances created. What happened? Maybe their conversion? Their conversion percentage, I mean, very below par. Weird. What a weird season to be looking at. Well, despite an absolutely weird season for Arsenal and how things looked at, I think the answers here are pretty definitive and for what we're trying to test, and it, it really comes down to these two statistics, headers one and headers one ratio. Arsenal won the most headers in the game, despite having the shortest team in the game. And they had the highest percentage of headers one in the game because of that 20 jumping reach. So given what we've seen in the match engine, given what we've seen over the course of an entire season, actually I'm curious to see where Man City and Man City were last for headers one and they were last for headers one ratio. Well, that is very definitive. It is clear. Height does not matter in the match engine. Only jumping reach matters. From this, genuinely, you don't even need to look at height. Only need to look at jumping reach because that is what matters within the match engine. Well, on that note, I hope you've enjoyed this FM experiment. I hope you found this helpful. Maybe this will help you with signing, especially center backs and forwards where jumping reach seems to be really important. But I hope you've enjoyed this experiment. I hope you found it informative, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!